everything's a wheel, turning and turning, never stopping. This is one of the many lessons that Natalie Babbitt shares with us in her novel, Talk Everlasting. A story about a young girl who faces a tough decision of choosing between everlasting life or letting her life go as it should. Everything's a wheel, turning and turning, never stopping. I read that as a kid when I was in school and learned it by memory. Little did I know that life would make me live it in the flesh. If you're like me, you're probably always planning. I've got to do this and that for work. Next weekend, I have a meeting with friends. I've got to pay for that next month and so on. I'm constantly planning. And I don't do that only for day-to-day -day agenda. I do that for life. When I was 15, I used to say that I was going to get married at 25, have children by 26, have my own house and run my own company by 30, and so on. Then I also said that I would travel around the world and so on. And I truly believe that building plans is important because it gives you direction and it actually allows you to accomplish your goals. Yet, we have to let go the illusion of control. So what is this illusion of control? According to Pete Wilson in his book, Plan B, the illusion of control is that feeling of losing control when your dreams are unfulfilled or when our expectations are unsatisfied or simply when life doesn't go as we thought it would. Yet, the truth is we have never had control. So I'm gonna tell you about a couple of times when my life didn't go as planned. I used to work at PNG, the largest multinational consumer goods company as a sales representative. I had a very lucrative salary at my age. I led a team of around 30 people and I simply loved my job. Yet, I also had a dream of going to Africa as a volunteer. And at that time, there was this NGO that sent every year two volunteers to Tanzania. I talked about this with my family, my boss, and my peers. And finally, I decided that I was going to quit to pursue my dream. It was a risky decision because this NGO managed it as a contest. So several people applied, then they went through several tryouts, and finally they chose two people. When I applied, we were seven candidates. We prepared ourselves for around two months. And finally, guess what? I wasn't chosen. I was devastated. I had left this amazing job and now I didn't have the job. I didn't have the volunteer program and simply everything was gone. I kept on asking to myself, why did I do this? How irrational of me? How could that happen to me? So it took a couple of years to overcome this, but then I, decide, I decided to go after another dream. I wanted to study my master's degree abroad and earn a scholarship. So I started applying and I started receiving the answers as well. Thanks for applying, but you were not chosen. Your application was unsuccessful. You were accepted, but you didn't get the scholarship. So I simply got frustrated and I started thinking that I was going to study my master's degree in my country. Yet, Facebook knew my search patterns. And one day, an ad about a scholarship from the Organization of American States popped up. I had thought that I was going to study in Guatemala. But then there was this thought that kept on telling me, apply for the last time. And so I did. And then four months after that, I received an email that said, dear selected candidate for the OAS scholarship. I must admit that after so many no's, I was skeptical. I must confess that I didn't even remember what university or what program had I applied to. 
So it was not Chile, it was not Germany, it was not New Zealand or Australia, but it was Brazil. I was going to study my master's degree in engineering and innovation program at the Federal University of ABC in Sao Paulo. Sometimes opportunities open up ahead of us, even without planning them. At that point, I learned that quitting my job at PNG, not going to Africa as a volunteer, and not getting the scholarship from all of these places that I applied to was simply the path that I needed to go through to accomplish my dream. Under different circumstances, unexpected but wonderful circumstances. So what did I learn about these two experiences? First of all, I learned that I have to be humble at all times. Life doesn't always go as we think. Then. I learned that family and friends are our greatest cheerleaders, especially when we feel that the world is falling apart. I remember I was 26 and I was crying inside my parents' bed because of this. But here there was my safety net holding me tight and telling me to keep on hoping and keep on applying. I also learned to let go, that control is just an illusion. And finally, now I recognize that I developed different character traits when I came out of my comfort zone. I know that today I am a stronger woman compared to the Pamela of that time. So let's remember that the only thing that's constant in life is change. And if life is constantly moving, so should we. We have to learn to adapt, make iterations, and keep on moving forward, even if there is any difficulty. And that is called resilience. We have to learn not to get frustrated, but to navigate in this sea of uncertainty. And also, remember to make a stop and reflect on the different lessons that we have learned throughout the journey. Let's be hopeful for the future. As Natalie Babbitt also said, that's life, moving, growing, changing. Never the same two minutes together. Thanks for listening to a little bit of my story. <laughs>